What is going on everybody? Welcome back to The Common Coder. My name is Josh and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use ESLint with Visual Studio Code. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, before we get started, there are a couple prerequisites in order to follow along with this video. The first one is that you'll want to make sure that you've downloaded and installed Node.js as it's required to install and run ESLint. The second one, and this one's pretty obvious, you want to make sure that you've downloaded Visual Studio Code. And finally, you're going to want to make sure that you've installed ESLint into your project. Now, if you need help with any of these, I actually have videos on every single one of these topics, which I'll link down in the description below. Alright, now there's one more important concept that we need to discuss before we jump into the code, and that is is that the ESLint extension that we're going to be downloading and installing in this video is not the same thing as ESLint. So the way this works is that the ESLint extension uses the ESLint installation that is inside of your project or the ESLint installation that's installed at the global level on your machine. Now I always recommend installing ESLint at the local level because that way you know exactly what versions installed in your project and you're not going to get any surprise incompatibilities or weirdness going on with ESLint. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands that ESLint is required required in order for the ESLint extension to work properly. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into Visual Studio Code. All right, so on my screen here, we have a project open in Visual Studio Code, and this project is something that we set up in the previous video on how to install and configure ESLint. So if you haven't gotten to this point yet and you want to follow along with this specific project, feel free to check that video out first and then go ahead and jump back to this one. Otherwise, you should be able to follow along in any project where you have installed ESLint. And basically what that looks like, if we go into our package JSON. What we've done is installed ESLint at version 9.9.0. We've installed the globals package, which gives us global identifiers in ESLint for whatever environment that we're running in, whether it's a browser or whether it's Node.js, etc., etc. And then we also have the ESLint slash JS plugin slash preset, which is basically the ESLint JavaScript language implementation. So the ES in ESLint stands for ECMAScript, of which JavaScript conforms to the ECMAScript standard. So we need this ESLint slash JS in order to get the write language features for uh, our JavaScript environment, and then it also configures the recommended rules set by ESLint in the form of a preset. So it's kind of doing two different things at once. Then if we go into our ESLint config, you can see that we have imported that globals package along with the ESLint slash JS plugin. And then we're setting the language options for the globals to the node globals, since this is a Node.js project. And then we're using the plugin JS configs recommended configuration, which turns on all of the default recommended rules for ESLint. And I cover what those recommended rules are inside of the ESLint configuration video. So like I said, definitely check that out if you haven't seen that already. All right, now in addition to that, we've overwritten some of the recommended rules. So we've set the no unused vars rule to warn. And then we've also set the arrow body style rule to error always. And this rule basically just enforces the use of curly braces on arrow function bodies. And you can see if we run npm run lint in the terminal, we'll get feedback here from ESLint. So you can see here for the warning, it's telling me that hello is assigned a value, but it's never used. And then for the error, it's expecting a block statement surrounding the arrow body. So that's those curly braces that I was talking about. So this is is cool you know we can see the ESLint information inside of the terminal here but what would be way better is that if we could see that information directly inside of our JavaScript files as we're working and so that will help us make less mistakes as we're coding and let us see that feedback in real time. So in order to do that, what we need to do is install the ESLint extension for Visual Studio Code. All right, so in order to do that, what we're gonna do is go over here to the extensions panel, and I'm gonna go ahead and type ESLint up here in the search box, hit enter, and you can see that the very first result, which as of the time of this recording has 36.8 million downloads, this is the official ESLint extension from Microsoft. And you can see that it says it integrates ESLint JavaScript into Visual Studio Code. If I shrink the terminal down here just a little bit, we can see what exactly this does. So you can see that if I'm new to ESLint, I can check out the documentation, integrates ESLint into VS Code. And here's that important part that I was talking about earlier. So the extension uses the ESLint library installed in the open workspace folder. If that folder doesn't provide one, the extension looks for a global version. In either case, what we're gonna need is an ESLint configuration file, which can look like a .eslintrc, or it can take other forms. In this case, it could be eslint.config.mjs, since I'm using JavaScript modules, or it could be just eslint.config.js for uh, common JS JavaScript files. So in order for all of this to work, you need eslint installed and you need an eslint configuration file. So since we have all of that ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and click install. 
install and the installation should be relatively quick. And once it's done, I can go ahead and close the extension information. I can open up my index file. And now you can see almost immediately that we have feedback coming through from ESLint directly inside of our file. So you can see here is the warning. So let me go ahead and open up the terminal so we can see what those were. You can see the warning. Hello is assigned a variable, but never used. We're now getting that feedback directly inside of our code file. So you can see here that it says hello is assigned a value, but it's never used. And what's really cool is it gives me a link to that rule in the documentation. So if I go ahead and click this no unused vars and then click open, you can see that it took me directly to the no unused vars rule. You can see that it's got this green check mark, which means it's one of the recommended rules from the ESLint slash JS package. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. And we can see all of the various details about the rule, how we can configure it, so on and so forth. So having that ability to just click on the rule and see the information is super, super powerful. Same thing here, if we take a look at the hello function on the function body, if I hover over this, we can see that it says expected block statement surrounding arrow body. And again, if I wanted to see this rule information, I could go ahead and click the link here, and this will take me to the documentation for the arrow body style rule. And we can see that this one is not a recommended rule, but it is something that's able to be fixable by ESLint as indicated by this little wrench here. So you can see that it says, some problems reported by this rule are automatically fixable by the dash dash fix command. And we're gonna see how we can use that in inside of the ESLint extension here in just a minute. All right, now if I go back to VS Code, you can see that it also gives us some other neat feedback. If we look over here in the Explorer panel, we'll see that our file is actually red and it's showing a little two here. And this is also feedback that we're getting from ESLint. So you can see that it's telling us that there's two problems in this file, which are essentially the two pieces of feedback that ESLint's giving us. It's giving us the warning and it's also giving us the error. So let's go ahead and see what happens if I get rid of the error. So let me go ahead and just put curly braces around my function body. All right, and you can see that now the red squigglies went away, so I don't have an error anymore, but I still have the warning that's set up by my ESLint rule. But if you notice over here in the Explorer panel, you can see that the index text has changed from red to yellow, since now I only have a warning in this file, and the number of errors and warnings has been reduced from two down to one. So we get a lot of feedback from this ESLint extension inside of Visual Studio Code, and again, helps us write better JavaScript code up front without having to rely on the linter after the fact when we're pushing our code or creating a pull request. All right, now if you've installed the extension and you have ESLint installed in your project and you don't see any of this feedback here inside of your editor, one thing that you can check down here at the bottom, you'll see these little curly braces. If we click on this, We'll see there should be a section here that says ESLint and a spot to open the ESLint output. So if I go ahead and click on this, it's going to open up the output tab here in my terminal area. And what this does is it gives me feedback from the ESLint extension. So we can see that the ESLint server is starting. So that's the extension that's running behind the scenes that's providing that feedback in real time. It tells us what version of Node that it's running on, it tells us that the server is indeed running and it's using the ESLint installation from my project. Common coder slash code slash ESLint tutorial. This is my workspace or project directory, node modules, ESLint lib API. So if you didn't have ESLint installed in your project, it would probably pick it up from your global installation if you had that available. Um, but like I said, just to avoid any type of confusion, avoid any type of compatibility issues, things like that, always install ESLint at the project level so that way you know exactly what you're getting. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save my file here and then go ahead and run npm run lint again in the terminal. You can see that now, just like the file, we only have one warning. So one problems, zero errors, one morning and that matches up with what we're seeing here in the editor and also matches up with what we're seeing here in the file explorer. Now, one cool feature that we can do with ESLint, if you notice, if we hover over, not only do we get the rule information, we also can see what the problem is. And this will stay pinned to where I click to view the problem, which is pretty neat. I'll go ahead and close this. You'll notice also there is a spot that shows quick fix. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And there's a couple different options that we can use here. So on rules that aren't fixable, you're not gonna have an option for ESLint to automatically fix your file. But what it will do is give us an option to quickly disable the rule for a particular line, or it will let us disable that rule for an entire file. So there's lots of different reasons you might want to do this. Um, you want to generally avoid disabling rules unless there's a really good reason to do so. So definitely use these with caution, but there are legitimate cases where you might want to disable rule for a particular file. For instance, in the case of the no unused vars rule, maybe you declare the variable here in this file, but that variable is used in some other file. Again, there's ways around this by using JavaScript modules and other various design patterns. If you are ever in that case where you know you have a variable that's not being used in that one particular file, 
you could disable the rule for that line or for that file and then keep it enabled inside of the rest of your project. So for example, if I want to go ahead and use this disable no unused vars for this line, I can go ahead and click on this and this will add this comment syntax that says ESLint disable next line no unused of ours. So this is the rule that we're going to disable. And now you can see that that squiggly line went away. If I go ahead and save this, notice my Explorer panel does not show any warnings or errors anymore. And if I run the actual ESLint command line utility down here in the bottom, you'll see that we don't have any errors as well. So that will do it just for this line. If I scroll down a little bit and create another variable, let's just call this hello2 and we'll just set this equal to hello2. So now you can see that the rule is disabled for line two, but it still exists on line four because this comment is only disabling this rule for this particular line here. Now, if I wanted this to apply to the entire file, what I can do is go ahead and delete my line level comment here. I'll go ahead and get rid of that empty space, save the file. And now if I hover over this again and click on quick fix, I can disable it for the entire file. And what this will do is add the slash star syntax, which will disable it basically for the rest of the file or until it encounters the ESLint enable comment for that particular rule. So for example, if I put a couple lines of space here, so let's just say I wanted to disable a chunk of code inside a particular file. I can use that slash star syntax and then type ESLint dash enable and then no unused vars and then star slash. And now you can see the rule is only disabled within this chunk of code here. And then everything else after that, the rule will still apply. So there's lots of different ways you can work with the rules depending on what you need to do. So for example, let's just say I wanted hello one and hello two to have the rule disabled, but then everything else, let's just say I have a hello three Set that equal to hello three. And then now you can see again that the no unused vars rule is disabled for these two lines, but then it picks back up again after it encounters this ESLint enable comment. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of this and then set it back to where we had originally started from. And then I'm also going to go ahead and get rid of my curly braces. And one last thing that I wanna show is how we can use the ESLint extension to automatically fix any rules that are able to be fixed via the dash dash fix command line option. And so if I hover over this and go down to quick fix, you can see that we have a couple more options here. We have the disable arrow body style for this line. We have the disable arrow body style for this entire file. We can view the documentation, which we can also view by clicking the link to the rule. However, if you notice, we have two other options. We have this fix this arrow body style problem, which will fix this problem on this particular line. So if I go ahead and click on this, you can see that it wraps my console.log and even provides a return inside of curly braces. So it can automatically fix that error to conform to whatever rule you specified in ESLint. Let me go ahead and undo that. And then we also have the fix all auto fixable problems. And so if you have multiple multiple rules that are in error or warning states and you want to fix all of those in a particular file, you can go ahead and use this fix all auto fixable problems and that will fix everything inside of the currently open file. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and copy this function and create another one. So I'll call this hello function two. We'll just say hello to go ahead and save it. And then if I hover over this error, go to quick fix and then fix all auto fixable problems. You can see that for both my hello function and hello function two, it's wrapped both of those inside of curly braces so that it conforms to the rule that I've specified in ESLint. All right, and as you can see, the VS Code extension for Visual Studio Code is a super powerful way to get real-time feedback about the errors in your JavaScript code. And so if you're wondering how to configure any of the rules in ESLint, all you have to do is go ahead and click on any of the rule information, go ahead and open that up in your browser. And then we can go to this configure rules section over here on the left-hand side. And so we can see all of the built-in rules for ESLint by clicking on this built-in rules section here. And from here, you can see all of the various rules that are available from ESLint by default. Now, depending on your project, you can always install additional plugins that will provide support for whatever project that you're working on. So for example, if you're working on a React project or a Vue project, you'll want to download those plugins so that you'll get other rules that help with those particular frameworks. All right. And with that, we have learned how to use the ESLint extension inside of Visual Studio Code. All right. And that is going to go ahead and conclude this tutorial on how to use the ESLint extension inside of Visual Studio Code. If you like this video and found this information valuable, please give me a like down below. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We're going to be learning a lot more about web development, including HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and everything else in between. So if that's what you're into, I would love to have you along for the journey. As always, be sure to stay curious, never stop learning, and I will see you all in the next video.